Chapter 116, Obsidious After two weeks of training, Dirk had officially become a Rook-class warrior. This was unheard of for rank fours, but he had done it. Dirk didn't think it was that difficult though. His anima resonance destruction technique, specifically the blood destruction, gave him the ability to fluidly circulate anima throughout his body. Just finishing blood destruction made him a knight class capable of creating aura. The rest came down to his control, and if Dirk was good at anything, it was bending things with his powerful will. Except instead of forcing dark mana to cooperate, it was using his bodily energy to force his aura to settle down. Miraculously, utilizing aura didn't take mental energy. It took anima and bodily energy. When Dirk wrapped the knife in his aura, it also felt like an extension of his sense of touch. It was an odd feeling, but since Dirk had been relying on mana vision for so long now, it didn't surprise him much. Unfortunately, he couldn't progress much further. There were only two more days until Pandora's deadline. Plus, Dirk was dead tired. His mind was unbelievably strong, and he could ignore virtually all manner of pain. But that didn't mean his body could follow his mind. He had been training for over 20 hours a day, only getting a few hours of rest before continuing. It was hellish training by any normal standard, something only Dirk could withstand. And over time, fatigue had built. Long story short, he needed rest. So after Dirk took his step to become a rook class, he engorged himself with food before falling asleep. As he refused to drink potions of any kind, he relied on food for all his energy. He ate a few pounds of meat every day. This meat also came from powerful monsters at the tier 5 level, courtesy of Pandora and her fat wallet. Like that, he slept for an entire day, only waking up on the last day of the deadline. Wakey wakey, sleeping beauty. Ha! Huh. Dirk's head raised at the gentle voice. At first he thought it was his mother, but after his brain took a second to boot up, he realized it definitely wasn't his mother. Dirk's hand shot out, pointing to his bedside. The pistol appeared at the same time, and the barrel was placed against a soft object. Now you're poking my boobs with that thing? How am I supposed to retain my purity if you keep violating me like this? Please be quiet. Dirk's head fell back to his pillow, feeling another wave of exhaustion come over him. His pistol transformed into spite, the cat laying on his stomach and lazily eyeing Pandora. Cat. Bonjour. Spite responded dully as Pandora took a seat on the bed. She looked as elegant and stunning as always, but Dirk couldn't care less. He was more concerned about the dark madness hiding under that pretty shell. We leave tomorrow. Ah. Uh -huh. I hear you've made fantastic progress in the last two weeks. Tier 4 spells and a rook class. You're finally catching up to your true potential. Ah. Uh -huh. Pandora's mouth twitched before she pointed her finger. Dirk suddenly felt a wave of frost chill his neck, forcing him to jolt upward. Ack! Dirk smacked her hand away, causing her to snicker. I didn't know you could be so lazy. What do you want? Well, I wanted to be nice and equip you with a bunch of weapons, but you're not being very cooperative. She smiled as Dirk sat up. He took a deep breath and grabbed a black strip of cloth tying it over his cursed eyes. Next time, start with that. You're much more emotional than before, but you still take things way too seriously. Anything concerning you needs to be taken seriously. Haven't warmed up to me yet? She pouted and scooted closer, causing Dirk to jump off the other side of the bed. I may have told you my skill set, but that doesn't mean I trust you. If you're following me into a world of descending hell, then it would be better if that changed. Pandora's tone became a level more serious, but Dirk only responded with a snort. It'll change when you prove that giving you my trust won't get me killed. Finally, Pandora frowned deeply. She stood forcefully, seemingly about to erupt with anger. You still think I'm that psycho from Earth? I don't know otherwise. Pandora was silent for a moment. And with a sudden change in temperament, her face turned neutral while she walked to the door. When you decide to receive your weapons, come find me in the kingdom's treasury. Where is that? 
use your fucking soul connection and figure it out yourself. Slam. She exited with a bang. Dirk frowned as he heard her shoes click down the hallway. Pandora left the building with a tremble. I'm trying, damn it. After Dirk left his room to search for the treasury, he ran into his mother. She had been searching for him and her first words were thus. It's about time for me to leave. Now? Yes. Your father says he needs me in Horizon. Cecilia was solemn, Dirk sensing her urgency. He called me back earlier, and I've delayed for these past two weeks. Pandora was right. The world is in chaos right now. Several Horizon cities have been overrun, and your father is fighting a war against monsters. Viola and Rita also appeared at some point. Ethan is trying to step up like his father. Thankfully the nobles are banding together, but there's nobody to keep them in check besides the emperor who doesn't tend to involve himself with those affairs. There are also powerful monsters that are acting like generals and leading sieges. I understand, Mom. Dirk stopped her words with a smile. Like him, Cecilia was also hesitant about leaving. Deep down, she was still painfully guilty for what Dirk went through. She didn't want to leave him alone out of fear. His otherworldly skill and talent only mitigated these fears a little. She wanted to be there in case he ever needed anything. But seeing his smile, she pushed down her worries. She gave him a big hug. Promise you'll come visit if you pass by the capital. I will. Good. Then I have nothing to worry about. Cecilia separated and quickly said goodbye. Dirk waved as she disappeared from his mana sight, vanishing into the folds of space. He let out a sigh, turning on his heel. He walked in a certain direction, following tug of his soul connections. The first connection was vague and connected to Pandora. The second was connected to Spite. He had the cat follow Pandora to reliably find out where the treasury was. The treasury was an underground floor under the spire. It actually extended down into the weightless bridge between the upper and lower cities. Dirk went down a floor, quickly finding his way with the information from Spite. He eventually found a giant set of doors, two guards standing by on either side. Spite had been sitting in front of the doors, staring at the two guards. They didn't move though, just standing there with their emotionless faces. Dirk reached out his arm upon approach, Spite jumping up it and settling on his shoulder. The two guards finally reacted and looked at him. Dirk Strider, the princess awaits. Hmm. Dirk just nodded as the guards opened the doors. He walked in, entering a massive room filled with display cases and shelves. Pandora sat in the center of the treasury, specifically on top of a display case housing a huge gemstone. She didn't look happy, obviously mad about their previous conversation. Of course, Dirk didn't feel bad. He knew just how dangerous, volatile, and borderline evil this woman was. While she had definitely changed after being reborn, the souls were still the same. Until he could truly confirm that he could trust her, he wouldn't ever place his life in her hands. Not even a magical war between dragons and gods would change this. If anything, it made him all the more cautious. He could deal with her antics, her odd clinginess, and her teasing. He would help her with her objectives and let her help him. They could cooperate while riding this storm. But that didn't mean he trusted her. Dirk had made that clear, and he would act accordingly. About time. Pandora glared at him before jumping off the display case. Follow. She waved, and with measured strides, led Dirk down another level. They entered a second treasury after getting past a single old man that gave Dirk goosebumps. The entrance to this second treasury room was actually a ladder. After climbing down, they suddenly became weightless, and they entered. The second floor was a room designed while ignoring gravity. Display cases were scattered across all levels of space, the power of darkness keeping them anchored in the air. Pandora moved herself to one display case. Inside of it was a blob that looked like some kind of murky slime. It bounced around the display case while ripples caused spikes to jet out of its body. This is a high-level artifact of our Dark Kingdom, produced by a forge master and alchemist working jointly. 
it was their life's work, and there's only one in existence because they literally gave their lives to produce this. Their creation unfortunately didn't care too much for its parents and attacked them. They died after killing the hostile ego and planting another one with their souls as the price. Since then, it's been sitting in this treasury, waiting for its new master. Now, it's yours. Only, you'll need to tame the ego within. Do that, and you'll have a powerful tool at your disposal. If you can't, then we'll find something else. Dirk was silent, gazing at the bouncing blob within the glass case. He wanted to know what this item was, but he didn't believe it mattered. Whatever it was, it was powerful, so it would be useful no matter what. With that, Dirk drifted over. Pandora flicked her finger, and they were suddenly encased in an ice dome. The dome was incredibly solid, filled to the brim with earth and water mana that reinforced it dozens of times over. Dirk wouldn't be able to break the dome in a short amount of time. Then, she tapped the glass. The wall of the case melted away, releasing the blob. The blob shot out to escape, but Dirk was a step ahead. His hand shot out, and it looked like the blob threw itself into his grasp. Dirk grabbed the slime. It felt like melted rubber, yet had a strange metallic quality to it like fine grains of iron. A second after grabbing the slime though, Dirk felt an odd connection be initiated with it. Their minds, their egos, were suddenly connected. The slime hadn't known anything other than loneliness. It was first born from the souls of two artisans, one of the greatest forge masters and one of the greatest alchemists. The two had actually been secretly in love, and it was the only reason they had worked together on such a profound project. They gave their all for their creation. For both of them, the project was like making a baby. They came to love it like a child. Such was the natural inclination for masters and their crafts. And through their passion, they came to love each other even more. And their efforts bore fruit. A single mass of magic, material, and soul. The black blob didn't look like much, taken as nothing more than a botched concoction. But the artisans knew better. Unfortunately, through a freak turn of events, the creation turned on its creators. The blob exercised its greatest abilities, attacking the two masters in order to save its life from a non existent threat. The masters fought back to their great distress. They subdued the rogue ego within their creation, paying a great price to do so. They were left on death's doorstep, and their child had turned to nothing more than expensive goop. It was a horrible failure, and now, the couple couldn't fix their mistake. Unless, of course, they paid the ultimate price. With their strong wills, the two artisans mustered their energy, expelling their remaining power. They restructured the blob on the spot. Its power was reduced so that it could never kill its next master, and if they had left it in that state, it would remain a low-class artifact for the rest of its time. But they couldn't bear such a sorrowful end. So they did what only few through history had ever done before. They used the power of their souls to empower the artifact. They gave it not an artificial ego, but a true intelligence birth from a soul. A baby born from their union. And so, they turned to dust, the blob left as a naive child with no master. It was picked up by the Vampire Queen subsequently and dumped into the treasury out of naivety. Since then, it had lived an aimless life confined to a glass box. The Vampire Queen had initially planned to give it to a talented subordinate. But years went by and she both forgot and lost interest. Now, Pandora had come and dictated its use. For the first time in years, the blob was free. It escaped its cage, eager to do literally anything else other than bounce around a box. But then, it was blocked by a hand. The blob was more curious than anything. It carried no hostility and didn't know the concept of danger. It had never even felt pain. All it knew was that the hand was something new, so it wanted to play around. But upon making contact with the hand, something inside of it was triggered. The blob felt a connection be created between it and Dirk. And it saw Dirk's mind. Flashes of information containing scattered experiences from Dirk's two lives. The child who was beaten into a soldier. The cold killer who exterminated thousands from the face of the earth. The despair of betrayal and loss. The rebirth of a new child. 
The Love of a Mother The Descent into Hell Key instances from Dirk's lives played out in the blob's mind. In this way, it learned a lot. In fact, it learned far more than it wanted to. The blob's soul trembled. It understood Dirk's plight, but more than anything, it was afraid. It became deathly terrified of the monster known as Dirk. It had never seen such a cold and ruthless mind, one capable of killing anyone without batting an eye. It was so detached, so indifferent, so apathetic. Even Pandora acknowledged the ruthless person Dirk was. As a super soldier, he could truly kill anyone on a whim. If he was ordered to, he would do it, no matter who. While things had changed in his new life and Dirk had now made peace with his past self, he still retained that same ruthlessness. Perhaps in this way, he wasn't too different from Pandora who could so easily discard lives because she felt like it. The blob wanted nothing to do with that sort of person. It was a child that sought a companion. Even now, it cowered from Dirk's fierce gaze. Only, it didn't dare try to escape out of fear that it would be exterminated. Dirk wiped away the scary face, gazing oddly at the blob. He had also seen some of its memories, though they were few. He immediately knew that this blob was like a child, a curious kitten. It had been locked away in this box for so long. In fact, its only significant memories were from when it would see people drift into this treasury. Dirk had seen how it would bounce around in joy and curiosity. But it would always be ignored, making it sad. Now, it finally got a chance to interact with something new. But then it was met with Dirk's cruel memories. It trembled in his hand, barely keeping itself from melting away. He had thought that this thing had some strong ego that would try to attack him for attempting to wield it. But it was just a child. Not even Dirk was so heartless as to attack and subdue a child. At least, not anymore. His head snapped at Pandora. What the hell? What? This thing is a child. You had me thinking it was some kind of monster. How was I supposed to know that? I just gave you the facts of its origin. Now hurry up and tame it. It's supposed to be some kind of symbiotic artifact. Pandora just waved lazily. She really didn't care as she was still mad at Dirk. He snorted at her before turning his attention back to the blob trembling in his hands. Ah, sorry, little guy. He spoke softly, patting the slime with his fingers. The thing fit in his palm, making it look pitiful. He really did feel bad too. I'm not that heartless anymore. He mumbled, tapping into the connection formed between them. He tried to reassure it, letting it know that while he could still be a killing machine, he could be nice too. The little blob could feel his intent, and gradually, its trembling stopped. The bad memories it saw of Dirk's past faded, and it warily wiggled around in his hand. It wasn't sure whether to trust him or not. Then, he spoke. I'm not sure what you can do, but do your best, and I'll give you mine. I might be able to kill anybody but if there's one thing I value, it's the gun that helps me keep my life. I won't get rid of you. Dirk reassured the blob in his own special way. And it seemed to work. When the blob saw what he meant, its hesitation was wiped away. Like the child it was, its attitude reversed on the flip of a dime, becoming excited. As if that was the trigger, Dirk felt the connection between them strengthen. A power within the blob activated and a massive magic circle appeared over the two. Six magic circles stacked on top of each other, hundreds of runes flying between them and causing the surrounding mana to go crazy. Warning! The Heart of Promises has been satisfied. Familiar connection established. Would you like to accept, Obsidious, as your familiar? Chapter 117, Embark. Dirk was surprised seeing the notifications. Because this was his goal though, he readily accepted. When he did, the magic circles all activated, the power piercing toward Dirk's soul. He felt a light searing pain before a brand appeared on the back of his right hand holding the blob. At the same time, the faint connection to the blob strengthened several times over, becoming a full bridge between their souls. Dirk could understand the thoughts and feelings of the blob in that moment, and it could likewise feel his. Their minds were connected. 
Obsidious. Dirk mumbled the blob's name. It was fitting, given the blob's void black color and metallic feel. It bounced up and down in his hand. Familiar, Obsidious, accepted. Profile. Name, Dirk Strider. Species, Human. Tier, 4. Rank, 4. Attributes, Fire 100%, Lightning 100%, Earth 100%, Metal 100%, Dark 100%. Traits, Cybernetic Enhancement, Adaptable Genes, Pure Soul. Skills, AI Interface, Grade 7, Mana Resonance, Grade 5, Mana Lungs, Grade 5, Restoration, Grade 5. Stigma, Black Cat of Calamity. Familiar, Obsidious. Familiar skills, symbiotic armor, living flame, living gloves, pocket dimension, molding. Hmm. Dirk was surprised as the magic circles served their purpose and faded away. He read the skills of Obsidious curiously. He can become an armor. He has a pocket dimension, like a pocket ring. I can store items then. I'm not sure what the others are, though the gloves are somewhat self-explanatory. Wonder why they're special. Dirk stood there in silence, thinking to himself as Obsidious wrapped around his fingers and massaged them. What's a living flame? He suddenly asked. He actually remembered his forging master, Sir Tobastin, telling him something about it. He supposedly had one. Pandora explained. Living flames are powerful and basically infinite sources of magical fire that gain mild sentience and life. A skilled fire mage can tame them, making them a kind of familiar to use alongside fire magic, forging, or alchemy. They have a variety of uses in anything related to fire, and since they're spawned from source mana, they don't run out. Does that thing have one? Yeah. Dirk nodded. Then, after urging Obsidious with his mind, the blob settled on his hand. Whoosh! A flame suddenly ignited, almost as if Obsidious was burning itself. The fire was a deep red, though not amazingly obscenely. It was definitely weaker than the living flame Sir Tobastin had in his forge. However, even if Dirk used his full power to create a hot flame, it wouldn't be as hot as this one. Plus, living flames were more special than just hot fire. Wow. Impressive. You know, you can actually increase the power of living flames by absorbing others. Weak living flames are actually the most valuable since you can tame them easily and grow them. If we had a weaker one in the treasury, I'd give it to him. The only one we have though is equal to a tier 7 in power. The blob would get eaten instead. Right. Dirk nodded in understanding. Obsidious stopped releasing its fire at the same time, going back to massaging his hand as if it were teething. It was then that Dirk narrowed his eyes, looking at the fingers on his right hand. There had been a ring there, but it was gone. What did you do? He asked, and Obsidious shook in response. His pocket ring was spit out, Dirk grabbing it with his other hand. Upon inspection though, he found it was empty. My stuff? Obsidious blew a bubble, making a pop sound. Dirk's attention was then brought into the pocket space. There, he found all his stuff, plus a bunch of empty space. Dirk was surprised. His pocket ring only had a space a few meters in diameter. But Obsidious actually had a large 20 meter space. That's a lot. Very useful. Dirk thought pleasantly. He could store large bodies in there if he needed to. He could also pack a bunch of items with space left over. It looked like he wouldn't need a backpack for this trip, not that Pandora wasn't filthy rich enough to buy all the pocket rings she wanted. Finally, Dirk wondered about the armor skill of Obsidious. And with his urging, Obsidious complied. The blob suddenly expanded. At first it could fit on his palm, covering his hand when spread thin. But now, it rapidly attained mass from seemingly nowhere. The black metallic slime spread up Dirk's arm before covering his entire body. After completely engulfing him, the slime hardened, taking on a distinct form. It was a slim black armor that covered every inch of his body. 
one could see the outlines of muscles along the arms and legs, each fiber and joint clearly defined as if the armor had muscles of its own. The chest and abdominal muscles were prominent not unlike Dirk's while the head was totally featureless. It wasn't a normal plate armor, but another skin. If this armor didn't cover Dirk, he would take it for Obsidious' body. The armor only took a few seconds to take its form as Obsidious conformed to the shape of Dirk's body, learning his figure. Even when it hardened though, Dirk felt his movement remain uninhibited. In fact, he felt better than ever. The armor seemed to tap into the power of his body, enhancing his strength with its own. Dirk could feel the toughness and flexibility of it. He could even feel the ability to stream his mana and anima into it. Clearly it wouldn't inhibit his aura or magic in any way. If anything, it would enhance those too. While there was a bit of adapting to do, the connection between Obsidius and Dirk allowed them to fully cooperate. Obsidius had no trouble tapping into Dirk's power, exchanging his own. The transition was seamless. Good armor. Dirk mumbled in happiness. This was definitely a fantastic piece of equipment. It covered everything with no gaps and allowed him to retain his full combat ability, even enhancing it. And Dirk knew that he would only learn to work with Obsidius better in the future. They would complement each other. After a short minute of getting used to each other, Obsidius shrunk back down to his normal blob form. Dirk smiled at him. Truly, Obsidius had abilities that did justice to the life's contribution of a great forge master and alchemist. They didn't disappoint. Pandora watched from the side. Truthfully, neither she nor the Vampire Queen knew about the true abilities of this blob. It was only known that it could become an armor, but because it didn't contain that much power, it never got used. After a bit of thought, she had chosen it to become Dirk's armor. After all, it couldn't be that bad considering the price to make it. And it turned out to be much better than they thought. A full body armor, a living flame, and a pocket dimension. While there were two more abilities Dirk didn't test out yet, just those three were enough to make it a valuable artifact. Done yet? Pandora suddenly asked as Obsidius jumped around Dirk's body. He faced her before nodding. Then let's head back up. The air swirled around them as she said that, pushing the two back the way they came. After walking back into the first treasury room, Pandora brought Dirk over to another side room. The room was filled with various pieces of equipment. Dirk saw a lot of guns and their ammo, along with some enchanted weapons strewn about some tables. There were also basic supplies and accessories, more than Dirk knew what to do with. You have armor and a magical pistol. Now you get to take a few enchanted melee weapons to use with your aura. I've packed all types of clothes for different situations and survival supplies in case anything goes south on our trip. There are also some accessories with magical functions, one of which is used for long-distance communication. Pick your gear and pack the essentials on that table. I'm going to grab our ride. We leave the city in four hours. Pandora briefed him before leaving. Dirk watched her exit the treasury before focusing on the plethora of weapons in front of him. Though, his thoughts were a bit complicated. He knew Pandora was pissed. He could feel it through their soul bond. He had felt her rage in the morning too. But despite her rage, she still handed him an exceedingly valuable artifact and was loading him with weapons and gear. They weren't entering this storm unequipped. It was a sincere gesture on her part. She didn't just drag him off to go fight hordes of monsters barehanded. She was concerned for his safety and power. But that begged a few questions. Was she doing this because she valued his life or because she valued his abilities? He had few secrets that she didn't know. She knew his full combat power and exactly what he was capable of. So was this protection an investment or helping a friend? Dirk certainly didn't believe they were friends. No matter how comfy Pandora got with him, this was definitely business. In exchange for his talent and killing, she provided the resources and the battlefield to grow in. They were about to enter this battlefield in the hopes of acquiring an extremely powerful artifact. They were fighting against the gods at the behest of the dragons, the agents that would be moved in order to steer this war toward the desired outcome. 
Pandora used this as an opportunity to grow her own power alongside her influence using technology. She sought nothing less than world domination, at least in Dirk's mind. And Dirk was one of the most powerful weapons she could wield, especially with his potential guaranteed by his pure soul. It was a give and take for both of them. Dirk was already in her debt. But he couldn't help but feel bad. Sure he didn't trust her, and until she proved otherwise, he wouldn't ever place his life in her hands. In fact, Dirk would only ever willingly place his life in the hands of his mother, she being the most trustworthy person in his life. But he was different from how he used to be. He was treating her coldly, and she was still helping him. He felt hypocritical, like a parasitic leech just taking her valuables and giving nothing in return. While he knew he would be fighting very soon, he still had these thoughts. He was torn between the person he knew and the person with him now. He knew Pandora contained deep madness within her, the mind of an evil genius. He remembered vividly the atrocities her people and criminals committed, the acts of terrorism that sought to bring down global establishments. Tens of thousands died at the hands of her people, many of them being soldiers and military. She was psychotic. Deranged. If not for her not having absolute total control over the Council on Earth, then she really would be a truly evil person. The only reason she wasn't the worst human being in Dirk's mind was because the others of her council were independent to some extent, carrying out many of those aforementioned atrocities. When Dirk thought about it, he knew that she really only attacked the establishments, carrying out raids on secret projects and hindering the development of world governments. It was how she came to clash with him. And if Dirk was sure of anything now, it was that he hated the people who abandoned him. Those governments that betrayed him were the worst in his mind. If he thought about it more, the things she did weren't as bad as he used to think they were. He no longer minded the thought of those who betrayed him losing all their power. And now, Pandora was a new woman. The princess of the Dark Kingdom, the daughter of the Vampire Queen, a woman with modern science and technology in her head, and a mind that could influence entire empires. She was smart but now that she wasn't psychotic and mentally damaged, she was more normal. She actually had emotions, as did Dirk. She could get angry, she could smile in happiness. He had even seen her get a bit sad when Spite didn't let her pet her. She was more human than ever, an ironic statement considering she was a vampire now. Dirk could see all this. He saw her past and saw her now, and he wondered which one he should believe. To what extent did her madness rule her mind? How willing was she to betray him if it benefited her to do so? They had a deep connection and history, but how much did she value it? Dirk wanted to know what was behind that pretty face, behind those blood-red eyes that saw through everything. She wants to rule the world, and wants me to help her. That'll take a long time. Guess I'll have to observe for a while. Dirk thought before looking at the weapons in front of him. Then, he made his selections, preparing himself for what was to come. There was a small vehicle sitting outside the spire. The vehicle was shaped like a modern car with wheels and everything. It looked like an SUV, though because it was obviously enchanted, it lacked many of the defining features of an actual car. It was like someone stripped a vehicle of all its internals. Pandora was leaning against this car as Dirk walked over to her. He was surprised by the ride. You built this? Had it built by a forge master and enchanted. I didn't opt for flying since ground travel is safer for weaker mages. This thing uses earth magic to drive, and for the most part, everything is just looks. The inside is gutted besides some comfortable surface material. It'll be both our ride and tent. Even on rough terrain, it's capable of up to 80 miles an hour. Oh. Very nice. Dirk nodded pleasantly. He was definitely happy to be riding in a car. After all, it would be a long trip. All right, hop in. She spoke as she opened the door and got into the driver's seat. Dirk climbed into the passenger side and settled in while Pandora hit the gas pedal. The seats were lined with cushioning materials, making them more than comfortable enough for a long ride. The car jolted forward proceeding to drive down the paved roads of her dark kingdom. 
It didn't take long for them to reach the gate, and she didn't even stop as she was automatically let through. Like that, they left the capital city, riding off into the distance. The lands around the capital were mostly plains, so they drove through open roads for a long while. We're taking a route that follows the eastern borders all the way up to the Dwarven Haven. We're cutting straight through Horizon territory on the way, but we'll be nowhere near the capital. Unfortunately, there's one problem we may run into. Pandora spoke dully as she lazily drove the car. Dirk leaned into his seat and hummed. What's that? I have a railroad that's being laid as we speak, leading up to the haven. It cuts straight through the land for the fastest travel time, so it avoids any roads. But we need to follow the roads, and along the way, we'll be passing within 70 miles of a known major dungeon. Thankfully the railroad is out of the way, so it isn't at risk of getting attacked. But we're obviously not following the railroads. We're cutting through a monster horde. Correct. And why didn't we bring anybody with us? I told you, this is our own battle. Our mission is a total secret. There's no way I would bring anybody with us. Nobody even knows where we're going, including my bodyguard who I left behind in the kingdom. From now on, we're on our own. Pandora smiled a bit, seemingly liking the thought of moving independently. She had been a princess all her life, so her every action and word were always under close scrutiny and judgment. For possibly the first time in her life, she was breaking away from her life of constrained royalty, embarking on a grand adventure with total freedom. Dirk just sighed, petting Spite who curled in his lap. The world was about to take a step forward. Chapter 118, Gunner Slash Checkpoint the route to the Dwarven Haven was long, easily over 3,000 miles. The trip wouldn't be short. At least, that was if a normal wagon were traveling this route. With Pandora's specially constructed car, they could average around 60 miles an hour. While the bumpy roads made the drive rougher and slower than on paved road, they were still moving at a speed far greater than wagons. Pandora also told him that the car was designed to drive at those speeds for around eight hours straight. After that, it would need to recharge for double the time. That meant they could drive for eight hours a day. At 60 miles an hour, they could travel almost 500 miles a day. That would place them near their destination in a week. That was if nothing else happened, though. And if the world lacked anything right now, it was peace and quiet. Five hours in, they spotted their first monster. Dirk rested in the passenger seat. If his eyes weren't cursed, he would have had them closed. The new equivalent of shutting his eyes was unfocusing on the man around him, relaxing his senses. We're getting close. To where? The major dungeon. Suddenly, Dirk's senses sharpened. Their route would actually take them to one of the vanguard cities of Horizon right on the border. They were using those roads, and they would continue after going around the city. But between them and the city, off to the northwest, was a major dungeon. Dirk had only heard Pandora talk about how the lesser dungeons all disappeared, being eaten by the major dungeons. After that phenomenon, the major dungeons suddenly released all their monsters, including the monsters of the lesser dungeons they ate. This made the surroundings of every major dungeon a monster-infested war zone. Any unlucky cities that happened to be built near these major dungeons were overrun. But Dirk had yet to actually see it. It wasn't like he didn't believe her. But he wanted to confirm just how huge these monster hordes were. If the monsters mostly came from the lesser dungeons, then how strong could the hordes be? Now, he finally got to see it. Their route was surrounded by nothing but flat grasslands. It was usually very picturesque, filled with patches of tall trees and groves of flowers and plants. But now, Dirk saw nothing but desolate grounds ravaged by the tens of thousands of monsters that tread over them. In the distance, Dirk could make out hordes of monsters of all kinds marching across the plains. They were actually moving in the same direction they were. But the car obviously attracted attention as a fast-moving vehicle kicking up dirt. We're charging through. Get ready to defend. Pandora became serious. Dirk nodded before standing and climbing into the back. He then punched open a hatch on the roof of the car, sticking his torso through. 
a sniper rifle appeared in his hands at the same time. That was when Pandora floored it. She usually stayed at 60 miles an hour because it was most efficient. The faster she went, the more mana would be dissipated in the process of driving. But now, she had no reservations as she pushed it to its limits. The car stormed down the roads, rattling the chassis. But Dirk was able to keep himself steady despite standing, and he aimed his rifle while resting it on the roof of the car. At that moment, the thousands of monsters to the side of the road noticed them, and they immediately charged over. The ground quaked under the charge of these large monsters. Many of them were beasts of some kind. Dirk saw fire lizards, bears with armor of rock, and tigers with claws of wind. Birds swooped down at high speeds, spreading their talons at the new prey. It was overwhelming. An entire monster army couldn't be stopped by Dirk alone. Even if he entrenched himself and held his ground, he would be overrun. There were too many, even if they were weak. But he didn't need to kill them all. He just needed to protect the car while Pandora charged through. Bang! A large tiger that had stepped in front of the stampede suddenly saw a hole pierce through its eye socket. It was over 400 meters away. The body collapsed instantly, tripping and hindering several others behind it. Dirk took aim as that happened. Bang! Another bullet, and a large bear that was moving too fast for its own good fell to the ground. A couple dozen monsters tripped and piled around the new obstacle while a few with quick reactions jumped over. Dirk sent bullets through the skulls of monsters that threatened to reach them quickly. Ones that looked strong were also tested. And under the high-power anti-material rifle, all of them died. Pandora knew exactly what bullets were capable of and how strong monsters and people could be. She didn't skimp on the rifle's strength, otherwise she may as well have not made them. Bang! Another shockwave shook the planes. A bird fell from the sky at the same time, crashing into the oncoming horde. With that, Dirk finally stopped. The sniper disappeared from his hands, entering obsidious pocket space. Then, another weapon appeared. Dirk mounted the machine gun atop the roof, aiming to the left side. Pandora continued to charge down the road, and monsters got ever closer to intercepting them. The pressure mounted, and Pandora found herself becoming serious. She was taking in every detail of the road in order to make sure they weren't slowed down. Her heart raced a bit in excitement despite the palpable tension. That was because of Dirk. She could imagine his blank face right now, one that cared for nothing more than ruthless efficiency. And she felt a chill when she heard him skillfully load a belt of 50 caliber rounds into the gun. She couldn't help but look to the side, gazing pitilessly at those oncoming monsters. There was only one thing she was disappointed by. Too bad we can't harvest their crystals. Bang 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 bang. Plumes of flame exited the barrel alongside seeds of death. Pandora smiled giddily as a line of monsters suddenly collapsed 60 meters away. Dirk taped down the trigger with his finger, moving the barrel to point at the heads of those in his sights. Even as the car raced down the road, he was purely focused on clearing the way, keeping monsters from stopping their momentum. Shells bounced around Dirk's feet after they were ejected, producing the harmonious sounds of clinking brass. His machine gun simultaneously orchestrated the screams and roars of monsters. After several seconds, a belt was finally consumed. Dirk rapidly grabbed another one from Obsidious pocket space and loaded it as if he had done so thousands of times before. Within two seconds, he racked the charging handle and pulled the trigger again, letting another volley flow from the metal tube. The car continued to barrel down the road, and monsters kept collapsing in on them. Waves in the front threatened to halt their drive, but Dirk skillfully cut them down with precision. Nothing even stepped on the road ahead. Pandora racing by piles of corpses. A trail of dust was kicked up for miles as they raced against this monster tide. It lasted for over an hour. Even as one of Dirk's barrels threatened to melt, he merely changed it out before continuing. When it irreversibly jammed, he merely pulled out another machine gun, continuing his barrage. It was an hour and a half later when they finally passed the worst of it. At some point when the sun began to set, Dirk ceased his fire, 
preventing the attraction of any strays. They had passed the horde. When things were clear, Dirk sunk back into the car, climbing into the passenger seat. Pandora glanced at him. Count? 28,000 rounds. Ouch. She cringed a bit. She had obviously prepared tens of thousands of rounds of ammunition for this trip. But in under two hours, Dirk had spent almost 30,000. The ring on his finger dedicated to ammo storage was now much less full. That's about 20% of our machine gun ammo. We need to be more sparing. If the situation allows for it, then I'll try. Or we can use magic. My magic would have negligible effects. And you just enjoyed the show. Eh. She shrugged, causing Dirk to roll his eyes. While he didn't know just how powerful her magic was, he knew she was definitely much more powerful than him. After all, she was exclusively a mage with four attributes. There was no way that she was any less powerful than a high tier 5. If she had helped in that battle, they could have used much less ammunition. Dirk didn't care either way. Tools were meant to be used. He wouldn't spare ammo and risk getting stopped by the hordes. So much as slowing down would have put them in a perilous situation. Well, we're at least ahead of schedule now. Pandora adjusted in her seat. The car has an hour of driving left in it. When the tank is dry, we'll stop for the day and continue when it recharges. We should be at our first checkpoint by tomorrow afternoon. She calculated out with a map in her head. She already had this trip planned out fully. While this little event threw off their schedule a bit, it wasn't anything they couldn't adapt to. Dirk didn't nod or hum, just sitting back relaxedly. Spite appeared on his lap while Obsidius bounced around the cat. The two had begun playing with each other, Obsidius being batted by Spite's paws. After another hour, the car began to slow down. Pandora drove off the road, parking in the midst of some trees. When the car jolted to a halt, the two sat there in silence. Well, now we wait. It'll recharge on its own. Pandora climbed out of her driver's seat. The entire trunk of the car was empty besides a large mattress with pillows and blankets. She had intended for this car to be their tent as well, so the two never had to brave the elements or get their hands dirty in the wilderness. Dirk suddenly asked. How armored is this car? It can easily withstand the attacks of a tier 5, perhaps getting damaged by a tier 6. Even if a horde of monsters piled on us, they would have a very difficult time tearing into this thing. And with all the supplies I stocked up on, we could technically live in here for months. Dirk nodded a bit. Pandora actually had a small box filled exclusively with pocket rings of different sizes. They were all filled with varying kinds of ammunition, tons of food, mana crystals, anima bones, and more. They were the furthest thing from unequipped, carrying with them a large fortune. Since it was now later in the day, the two checked out. Pandora cast a few air spells that acted as alarms. Dirk also did his destruction cycle, extracting the dense anima from the bone of a strong monster skull. Dirk had learned the advanced anima resonance technique that was required to go beyond blood destruction. Though, he guessed that he hadn't mastered it yet, which is why he didn't get the related skill as Pandora had mentioned a while back. Still, it vastly sped up his destruction cycles. With denser anima and a better technique, his muscles were both destroyed more thoroughly yet ingrained with far more anima. On top of that, he healed faster, a courtesy of the increased anima content and his body boosting his restoration skill. Instead of the initial 26 weeks, Spite had calculated a short 7 more weeks until he finished muscle destruction. Of course, that was if he did a destruction cycle every day. There would likely be periods where he didn't, prolonging the process. Pandora also urged Dirk to do some magic study. While the two only had the mutual attribute of Earth, they could still exchange some general ideas. Comprehending runes was one such way for them to cooperate. Pandora had even brought a few magic texts, one of them on the Dark Element. Vampires were the world's leaders in terms of Dark Element proficiencies, so they had no shortage of profound texts available. Pandora gave one to Dirk, intending to further his understandings. Like that, the depths of night fell. 
Pandora was quick to get comfortable in the trunk of the car, sprawling across the mattress. Care to join me? Seeing Dirk in the front passenger seat, she patted the space next to her, beckoning him with those alluring ruby eyes. Dirk frowned a bit as he turned his head back. Wasn't she still mad at him? It wasn't like her emotions couldn't flip on a whim though, so he didn't care too much. Still, he shook his head. I'll sleep here. But those seats aren't as comfortable as this luxurious mattress. I could sleep on rocks, let alone a cushion seat. Besides, my body stays alert when I'm less comfortable. Something we need out here. He sunk into the chair with those words, coming to rest like a statue. Pandora just shrugged, collapsing into the pillows around her. Get up. Suddenly, Dirk's head shot up. His mana vision concentrated, and in his mind, he could see Spite's vision. About five hundred meters away, there was a huge horde of monsters rushing toward them, snarling as if launching an offensive on the car. Without hesitation, Dirk moved and slammed open the hatch on the top of the car. A machine gun appeared in his hands. Pandora! Wake up! Pandora! Dirk shouted and looked down. Pandora was out cold, sleeping like a brick. She wasn't roused by his yell at all. Snorting, he just looked forward. The familiar sound of belt-fed ammo being chambered into the gun was like music to his ears. And he mercilessly pulled the trigger. Ratatatata. Dirk opened fire, hot brass falling to his feet. The front line of monsters that were approaching from afar were cut down cleanly. At the same time, Pandora's eyes shot open. Ack! Damn it, Dirk! You're loud! Pandora snarled as the percussive sound made her ears ring and hot casings burned her skin. She curled in on herself before taking a guess as to what was going on. She eventually pulled herself up, stumbling into the driver's seat. Asterisk SKRR. Asterisk. The wheels of the car spun as she slammed the gas pedal, creating skid marks in the hard dirt below them. The car jolted forward, climbing onto the paved road before shooting into the distance. Now in the open, the two could more clearly see the hordes around them. The sun hadn't even risen yet, and yet the glow of mana lit up the armies of monsters. The hell? Pandora was observing the monsters as she drove and fully regained consciousness. As she thought, they weren't aiming for them. Instead, she could see monsters in the back line attacking each other, ripping apart other monsters like they were rabid. The ones in front were running from these rabid beasts, but even they were hostile against their fellow escapees. Then, she saw something peculiar. The victorious monsters devoured the mana crystals of their dead prey as if they were unattainable delicacies. The monster would then fluctuate with bursts of mana. She could see the wild fluctuations of mana in her own mana vision. Dirk could see it most clearly though. He could see all the mana crystals within the beasts, and he noticed that the monsters attacking each other were always of a similar element type. A water attribute monster would eat the water mana crystal of another. Doing so seemed to make them more powerful, though a lot of the mana of the attained crystal seemed to be lost in the process. Since the monsters weren't focused on them, Dirk was quick to cease fire and reduce his presence. He would only shoot the ones getting in their way, which thankfully didn't amount to much. Before long, they had left the range of the monster horde, slowing their speed. Pandora brought the car to a cruise as Dirk sunk back down into the seat. What was that all about? Not sure. Pandora was curious. It wasn't like she knew any more than Dirk about this. Monsters used to be confined strictly to dungeons, but now they were out and about the wild. This kind of phenomenon was unheard of. It seemed to be some kind of population control, along with a power boost. Eating mana crystals seems to increase their power. If there are too many in a given area, they go berserk and attack each other, reducing numbers while increasing the power of those near the top of the hierarchy. While it thankfully culls their numbers, it's not so comforting to know they can now evolve unlike when in the dungeons. My mother said something about monsters being led by something similar to a general. Maybe this is the process of creating a general. Pandora sighed. She had heard a lot from those in other cities that she could communicate with. 
but she had yet to hear of organized attacks by monsters. This little event was worrying. After being silent for a while, Pandora checked the fuel of the car. The car hadn't been able to charge fully, but she was satisfied with where it was at. Our fuel is enough. If we refrain from speeding, we'll reach our first checkpoint by noon. All right. Dirk nodded before letting out a light breath. Pandora glanced at him with narrowed eyes. Are you going back to sleep? No. Bullshit. You dare sleep while I drive? Hey, I don't know how to drive an enchanted vehicle. Besides, I'm the gunner. Dirk smiled a bit. His eyes were closed and covered anyway, so she couldn't tell if he was asleep. Like that, she could only helplessly drive while Dirk got some more shut eye. After several more hours though, they finally made their approach to the first checkpoint. The situation of said checkpoint was anything other than favorable, though. Chapter 119, Siege The first checkpoint was a city on the border within Horizon Territory. Before the escalating conflict between the humans and vampires, it was a major trading post. The city was very prosperous, especially with the major dungeon not far from it. But now, the place was on the verge of collapse for that very reason. Pandora drove a distance away from the massive city, circling the walls that surrounded the place. This was due to the horde of monsters launching a siege on the city. Thousands of monsters clawed the gates that had been filled with walls and piles of stone. Many attempted to jump up the walls, and many flying monsters swooped down onto those soldiers that fought in the open. Monsters that cast magic were constantly launching spells after breaking through holes in the walls, setting the city afire and wreaking devastation. Of course, the city was putting up a fight, otherwise it would have long collapsed. Earth mages were constantly erecting new structures that the soldiers used to defend and attack from. Even citizens were digging trenches in an attempt to help stifle the oncoming monster tides. Every magic and weapon and consumable tool was exhausted in order to cull the thousands that besieged them. How unfortunate. Pandora clicked her tongue. Those cities stationed right by major dungeons definitely got it the worst. Though, she was surprised that this city was able to stand for so long. Still, she never changed course. After driving around, she continued on the paved road, bypassing the city. She never intended to stop at the city to begin with, just using its roads to travel. She planned to continue on to the next checkpoint, wasting no time. Dirk frowned when he realized this though. Stop. What? Don't tell me you intend to help. And if I do? She glanced at him, a bit annoyed. Dirk's face hardened. Stop the car. Fine. SKRR. The car skidded to a halt, but Pandora never took her gaze off Dirk. What do you want to help them for? They can't give you anything. It's a waste of time. I just want to help. There are soldiers there fighting for their lives. We can do something. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. We have more important business at the Dwarven Haven, the value of such business outstripping any good we can do here. Dirk frowned more at her words. While their business at the Haven was important, he still didn't feel right just leaving this city to burn. The two stared at each other for a while. At some point though, Dirk let out a sharp breath, sitting back into his seat and turning his head away from her. He was giving in. Pandora didn't smile though. If anything, she became more annoyed. After a few seconds of deliberating, she grit her teeth. Ugh! She slammed the gas pedal, flipping the wheel and pointing them at the city. The car barrel tore a part of the walls that wasn't being sieged. Dirk glanced at her. What are you dash? Just shut up. I have one condition, and that's not using any of the guns. I don't care how many people will die. You either save lives with your own body and magic, or we're moving on. Got it? Fine. Although her yelling caused his anger to flare, Dirk just nodded. The car soon arrived at one of the city gates. This gate had a smaller amount of monsters attempting to break through it compared to the others. Atop the walls, soldiers were firing arrows and magic spells at the clustered horde below. They obviously spotted the odd vehicle approaching. 
when the car got closer, a black figure popped out of the top. Dirk emerged, Obsidius wrapping him in his black armor. Even as the car moved, he stepped onto the hood, looking at the fast approaching monsters. He crouched, and right when Pandora braked, he jumped. His body flew off the hood and sailed through the air. His fist was brought back as he aimed at a large bear type monster standing eight feet tall. The bear hardly turned before Dirk's fist met its skull. Splat! Upon collision, Dirk's fist was uninhibited as it directly blew up the bear's head. He landed on the floor just as the bear collapsed, sliding across the ground for a second before coming to a stop. The soldiers atop the wall were baffled. The surrounding monsters all turned to Dirk, roaring at him with threatening outbursts of mana. Dirk stood calmly. In his hands appeared two short swords. With his staggering strength, he found short swords better than knives, able to wield them no different from knives. This was actually advice from his mother after training with him, and he grew to agree with her. The grip of each short sword felt good in his hands, even with Obsidius and its layer of armor. It almost felt like he was personally touching the metal hilt. It felt even better than with gloves. After waving the short swords in his hands, he focused on the few monsters that were dashing toward him. He took a step forward. Across the body of his armor, golden lines appeared. Shing! His arm flickered across his body, and a tiger monster fell to the ground alongside its head. Blood splattered onto other monsters nearby. That monster was a rank three, Dirk thought inwardly. Then, with another step, he entered the horde surrounding the gates. Pandora brought the car to a skidding halt outside of the battlefield. She sat there and watched as Dirk dashed between monsters. His technique in sword fighting was nothing special. It was simple and direct, lacking any sort of finesse most swordsmen had. Only Dirk's precision was outstanding. But like everything else Dirk did, his actions were straight to the point. When Dirk saw a monster, he instantly planned out the fastest and most efficient way to kill it. While his greatest killer instincts appeared behind a gun, his combat sense still applied even with swords. A slice of the neck, a thrust to the spine, the severance of tendons. Dirk didn't even kill some of the monsters, merely incapacitating them. Before long, a few dozen corpses were bleeding outside the gates, and even more were roaring and growling on the floor. At some point, the soldiers above stopped firing entirely, merely watching as Dirk dispatched every single monster by himself. Asterisk screech. Asterisk. A bird-type monster screamed from above as Dirk killed the last monster in the vicinity. It turned and was about to flee, and one of the mages atop the wall began casting magic to kill it. Before he even finished the spell though, Dirk brought up his hand. Zip! A black streak shot through the air, directly piercing the bird's head. Its body silently fell from the sky before landing with a thud. The mage hastily cancelled his spell, looking down at Dirk. He barely caught a glimpse of the pistol in his hands before it disappeared. At least that thing is silent. Dirk's head turned as the car pulled up beside him. Pandora smiled at him while he shrugged. It's a magic gun, so yeah, it's silent. Hmm. She nodded at Dirk's mumbling. She had seen when he was developing bullet spells for that pistol. And as it was magic, the pistol made no sound like a standard pistol. It was incredibly convenient. Suddenly, the two heard the rattling of chains. Their heads turned and looked at the city gates which had opened just partially. A soldier, one looking like a captain, walked over to them. Dirk mumbled before he could arrive. How do we play this? What do you mean? Our identities. Are we hiding ourselves? Of course not. The more prestige we have, the better. Let our names spread far and wide. Pandora spoke as a matter of factly. Dirk frowned though. That'll attract attention. So? Great tales of our strength can only help us. This isn't Earth, Dirk. You're not a super soldier anymore. People here respect strength and talent. Especially when it comes to help them. Identify yourselves. Pandora's low voice was interrupted by the shout of the captain. The voice wasn't hostile though. 
she pat Dirk's shoulder, prompting him to step up. Obsidius retracted as Dirk walked toward the captain. My name is Dirk Strider. I've come to assist in defense of the siege. Strider? The captain was surprised as the two came to a halt in front of each other. As in Mark was Strider? That's correct. I am the second son of Riker Strider. I see. I am Captain Alvarez, head of the Eastern City's troop. If you're really here to help, then we're more than happy to welcome your strength. And who is? Pandora Venatis. Pandora stepped out of the car with a smile, answering the captain. Princess of the Dark Kingdom, and daughter of the Vampire Queen. P-Princess? The captain was taken aback. He had already noticed this girl with her deep purple hair and blood-red eyes. She was so enchanting that his other soldiers couldn't take their eyes off of her. But he didn't think she was actually a vampire princess. What is a princess doing all the way out here? I'm on a trip with the man in front of you. He wanted to help, seeing how your city was being besieged by hordes of monsters. And now, we're here. I see. The captain nodded slowly. He eventually shrugged, deciding that this was above his pay grade. Very well. Follow me into the city. I'll take you to the city, Lord. Thank you. Pandora nodded before climbing back into the car. Dirk got in with her, and they were led into the city. They rolled through the ruined streets. The only buildings left standing were the ones in the center of the city. The outskirts were wastelands and battlefields. They could see the fighting in the distance, mages casting spells that created waves of fire and blades of wind. The captain had his soldiers stay behind while he guided Dirk and Pandora to the center palace. They moved quickly, and soon arrived before the massive castle. The two got out of the car and viewed the fortified 300-meter-tall castle. It had its own walls, and upon walking in they could see camps of soldiers who were either running around with supplies or getting their wounds treated. The sight of bodies lined up on beds, getting their wounds sewn up or limbs amputated was grotesque. The stench of blood only made it worse. But after so much fighting, everyone seemed to have grown numb. Even the young soldiers who looked to have been recruited recently were only pale at the sights. Neither Dirk nor Pandora were faced by this though. Dirk's face was blank, as usual. And Pandora had a faint smile, as she always did. It was like they couldn't even see the gore around them. The captain led them into the castle where they found more busy soldiers. He spoke on the way. We've been fighting off waves of monster hordes for three weeks now ever since the dragon's advent. Dragon's advent? The night that the dragon made its announcement to the world. Everyone heard it, even those in the capital. The entire world changed that day, in more ways than one. I didn't realize that was heard from so far away. Dirk was a bit shocked. He thought the announcement of the dark dragon was only heard by those in the local city. Turns out, the entire world heard his roar. Everyone knows about the war cataclysma. Pandora perked up at something else though. How else did the world change, besides the dungeons? Well, this is just our speculation, but we believe there was a change in the elements. After our war against the monsters started, we were forced to recruit able-bodied citizens. During the process though, we found a shocking amount of hidden mages and body refiners. At first we passed it off as coincidence but after we recruited over a thousand new mages and even more body refiners, we realized that the dragon's advent caused people to awaken, somehow. Either way, the only reason we were able to survive for so long was due to this influx of mages and body refiners. Interesting. Pandora nodded slowly. If anybody found out that they had attributes and affinities good enough to become a mage, they would be frantically trying to get their ability acknowledged. This was the way of the world, where mages and body refiners had vast opportunities open to them compared to ordinary people. Nobody would willingly hide their powers, unless they were ignorant. This sudden discovery of mages and body refiners couldn't have happened coincidentally. After all, everyone had a profile, ordinary or not. If they saw attributes, or the ability to sense anima and mana, they would rush to get themselves appraised. 
Long story short, this occurrence wasn't natural. Something changed after the dragon's advent, resulting in a surge of mages and body refiners. The captain arrived in front of a large pair of open doors. Inside there was one man giving orders to a few subordinates. He looked haggard, but he was an obvious leader. City Lord. H.M. Captain Alvarez. The city lord turned to the captain, immediately eyeing Dirk and Pandora. His pupils narrowed upon seeing Pandora's face though. The vampire princess. To what do I owe this unexpected visit? My friend and I are here to help, city lord baron. Pandora smiled, and the captain stepped forward. It's true, city lord. The man is Dirk Strider, son of Marquis Strider. He defeated a small horde outside the eastern gate. So you're Riker's son? The city lord's eyebrow raised as he pulled his sight away from Pandora. Dirk nodded to him. Correct, sir. You know my father? I do. You could say we're old war buddies. He also contacted me while looking for you not long ago. I see that things went well. Mm, thankfully. Dirk let out a light breath. He was truly glad he escaped Azura when he did. Taking another glance at Pandora, the city lord sighed. All right then. You're here to help? I'll take what I can. We've been getting attacked by monsters for the past three weeks. Thankfully we have massive stockpiles of food, and the monsters can also be harvested. In terms of supplies to sustain our dwindling population, we have more than enough. The problem is the rising coordination of the monster hordes. They're creating another general. City Lord Baron pointed at the map on the table in front of him. The primary concentration of the hordes are coming from the west. We believe the general is commanding the monsters from there. Though, it's still weak in learning how to control the hordes, so it hasn't grown to become a large enough threat. The clock is ticking, however. It's only a matter of time before it learns to launch strategic attacks against our city. You need to kill the general before then. I'm sure you could do that yourself, City Lord Baron, considering you're a rank 7. So what happened? Pandora stepped forward and I the City Lord. She knew about him since he was in charge of this city on the border. She made sure to know everyone who could affect any of her plans, and this person who controlled a frontier city and a standing army was one such person to pay attention to. Because of that, she also knew he was a rank 7. The fact that he hadn't taken care of this up-and-coming monster general yet meant something had happened to him that prevented him from doing so. That, or he was just stupid, but those chances were small. The city lord sighed, re-evaluating this princess's deductive abilities. Grabbing the chest plate of the armor he was wearing, he exposed his chest. Through his right chest was a hole over four inches wide, one that they could see through completely. I killed the previous monster general only a week ago. After the fact, I had been exhausted, and I suffered this wound while fighting my way out of the encirclement. I lost my right lung, and this hole remains. My abilities have been hindered since then, and I'm still recovering from internal wounds. I couldn't reliably fight even a rank 5. But you're right. We need to kill this monster general. I've been preparing a team to do so. However, the chances of them successfully killing the general and returning alive are slim. The general is still weak, but there are thousands of monsters out there. They would need to infiltrate those hordes, and doing so without getting noticed is close to impossible. So we need a strong but small team who's willing to risk their lives and assassinate this general. Pandora was quiet, but her smile suddenly widened. She and Dirk glanced at each other, and Dirk couldn't help but smirk a bit. She turned to the city lord. Well, city lord, today really is your lucky day. C-120, abysmal. Pandora managed to convince the city lord to let Dirk take part in this assassination assignment. There was only one problem, though. They didn't actually know the exact identity of the monster general. It was hiding somewhere in the midst of the monster hordes. Only by tracking the greatest concentrations of monsters could they guess where the general was. The city lord had intended to launch a reconnaissance mission first. 
the monster general had only begun to appear in the last week since killing the one prior. The only reason they knew it was there was due to the monster's oddly coordinated movements. Either way, finding this monster general wouldn't be easy. However, the city lord truly was lucky. Not only was Dirk the perfect one for an assassination, but Pandora had the skill known as Eyes of Truth. She immediately volunteered to track down the monster general using her special eyes to pick out any abnormalities. The city lord, while not entirely trusting this vampire princess, also wouldn't deny their attempts to help. And so they waited until the next day. When night came around, the monster attacks died down, giving everyone time to rest. The city was eerily quiet as darkness fell, a result of only a fraction of the previous population still being alive. The city was on its last legs. It was only until the following afternoon that the attacks picked back up. The soldiers moved as if robots, fending off the hordes from the walls and other fortifications. Pandora stood upon the western wall as all the soldiers beside her rushed to carry out their duties. Arrows and spells were constantly launched from above, killing those below. Many of those who passed the vampire princess were at first enraptured by her beauty. She radiated a palpable air of royalty, her purple hair waving along with the wind and red eyes scanning the monsters in the distance. But when the soldiers found her doing nothing but standing there, watching, they became irked. They wondered why this pompous princess wasn't doing anything but standing in the way. Many of them threatened to bump into her as they ran past, only, when they got close to touching her, their skin began to sting under the bite of extreme frost. It wasn't obvious, but she had an extremely cold aura surrounding her. And of course, she wasn't standing atop the walls aimlessly. Her eyes were viewing everything in front of her. The vast monster hordes appeared in her vision along with all the different elements that exploded out of their hosts. More than that, she could see faint lines. She caught sight of three different clusters of monsters, from their centers extending a web of mind-controlling threads. These threads made the monsters move like herds, an odd occurrence since monsters were mindless beasts that only sought to kill, eat, and grow stronger. Tell Dirk to come back. She suddenly spoke. Beside her was Spite, and the cat nodded curtly. Below them, a few explosions of fire created a wave of heat that burned a dozen or so monsters. Then, a black figure jumped out of the hordes, aiming for the side of the wall. Bang! Dirk shook the wall as his fingers clawed into its surface. With a little earth magic and a few bounds, he was able to climb it. Unlike Pandora, upon seeing Dirk, many soldiers eyed him with awe and respect. Dirk had been fighting down amongst the hordes, being the only one able to keep his life in such a chaotic environment. He had already killed hundreds in the few hours they fought. What? He asked with a long breath. The featureless head created by obsidious armor retracted, revealing his face and covered eyes. There are three monster generals. Three? It seems like those three are fighting for control over the monsters. Their hordes occasionally attack each other, but only moderately. They're in a stalemate due to them attacking the city. Anyway, we'll have to kill all three, and the monsters will subsequently lose their coordination. Maybe they'll disperse, and the city will be saved. Though, that's being incredibly optimistic. Dirk was silent as he looked off into the distance. His mana vision still wasn't as precise as normal vision, but with all the mana bursting from the monsters, he could see the hordes in the distance clearly. In fact, he found that having Obsidius equipped made his mana vision even clearer. It was like the blob amplified the elements he could sense, making them pop more and give more detail. So what's the plan? He looked at Pandora. Simple. Infiltrate and kill the monster generals. How will I know which monster is the general? Hmm, I'll have to build a spell for it, but I can see the generals rather clearly in my vision. With the spell I have in mind, I'll be able to illuminate the specific monster with light mana. You just need to target the tagged monster. All right. And what about the group formed by the city lord? Them? Pandora glanced at Dirk with a dumb expression. Come on. Since when do you work in a team? When we decide to operate, you can go by yourself. 
it'll allow you to kill and escape easier without the burden of others. The city lord can thank us after we're done. Fine. Dirk just nodded. He truly was better off working alone. While partners brought more firepower, they also brought more uncertainty. Without any more words, Dirk jumped right back down the wall. Since they had until nightfall, he decided he would fight until a few hours before. Upon landing in the midst of the monster hordes, Dirk's body became taut. His anima activation was light as he slashed a large rodent with his short sword, using that attack to dodge the clawed swipe of another monster. He went on the offensive, carving his own path of carnage. Every step forward not only took a life, but evaded an attack. In this situation, defending wasn't an option, or he would never be able to kill anything. Dirk's body spun around as he went from monster to monster. His swords slashed open their necks, stabbed their chests, and slashed their limbs. Most of the monsters attacking were weak, not stronger than a rank 4. Most were merely rank 2, and Dirk's weapons glided through their bodies with ease. Some were magic monsters, casting spells of all elements that had no regard for friendly fire. Dirk used these to his advantage, killing monsters without so much as touching them. The area around him would only take a minute or so to become devoid of monsters. When that happened, Dirk would just dash to the nearest cluster, wreaking more devastation. His stamina seemed endless as he fought for hours at a time. Dirk smiled as he appreciated the perks of blood destruction. It was only when the sun began to set that Dirk finally calmed down. His breathing was labored, but through his effort he had ended the lives of nearly 4,000 monsters personally. The endless hordes seemed to thin a bit under his lone effort. The only reason he could do this was due to him fighting in front of the western gate where the monster generals commanded from. The monsters gathered around them and then attacked the gates. Normally they would break through after several hours, moving the fight within the city where soldiers fell back to their secondary fortifications. This was how it had been for weeks now. But with Dirk there, he single-handedly held them back. Nobody was crazy enough to throw themselves into that mosh pit from hell, so they could only kill from afar with magic. Of course, this decreased everyone's ability to kill, outright making body refiners useless. But the battles were about preservation, not winning. Dirk had saved many lives today alone by throwing himself into that chaos. From above, Pandora smiled the entire time. At some point, Dirk jumped back up the wall, using previously created ledges for a foothold. He landed next to Pandora, taking deep breaths while kneeling, washing away his fatigue. She glanced at him, smirking. How's my super soldier? It was like I was back on Earth, watching you devastate my armies from within. Don't call me that. And I need food. I'm starving. Here. Drink this. It'll recover your stamina. Pandora took out a vial, filled with an unknown potion. She tossed it to him. When he saw it though, he grit his teeth and batted away. Shatter. The vial burst after being backhanded, the liquid within spilling on the floor. Pandora's eyebrow raised, not expecting such a violent response. Sorry. Realizing what he did, Dirk looked away. I don't drink potions. All right. Let's get you fed then. Pandora put out her hand, her voice surprisingly soft. Dirk lifted his head before taking it, pulling himself off the floor. The two made their way back to the castle. Because of obsidious armor, Dirk didn't have a single speck of blood on him after the blob retracted. The black slime bounced on his head excitedly, happy after protecting its master through such a long battle. Through the battle, there were some attacks Dirk either couldn't or didn't bother avoiding. In those moments, he had tested Obsidious defense. The armor really was metallic, being both flexible so Dirk could move around yet rigid enough to keep blades from slicing through. Dirk found the armor to be able to block the claws of a rank 3 monster, albeit with some noticeable scratches left behind. If it were a rank 4 monster, Dirk knew that Obsidious would be limited in its protection though it would still be infinitely better than nothing. However, these protective abilities only applied if left alone. As Dirk had discovered a while ago, Obsidious could not only enhance his anima, but make use of it. 
the glowing golden lines that appeared on the black armor were a result of Dirk infusing anima into it. And with his anima, Dirk could reinforce the armor, making it stronger according to the strength of his anima. This meant that, while he'd have to expend more energy, he could enable Obsidius to block the claws of a rank 5 monster. Rank 4 monsters couldn't so much as scratch the armor if he reinforced it. It also helped now that Dirk was a rook class warrior, capable of infusing anima into objects without destroying them, instead enhancing them. Today's battles only helped him sharpen his ability to control anima. For nearly all of the battles, he strictly used his anima techniques and short swords to attack, refraining from using magic. Though, one spell he used frequently was void walking. He found that he could use it much more than before with his larger dark mana reserves. His proficiency was also steadily rising, able to accurately void walk in the midst of dozens of monsters. But as his mother pointed out, he still used it in his odd little way. He'd appear, for a split second, in two places at once while void walking. While it did indeed alert the monsters faster, he couldn't find a way to stop using it that way. It just didn't make sense otherwise. You're back. The city lord nodded as Dirk and Pandora entered his headquarters. He noticed Dirk's haggard appearance, and smiled. I've heard about your performance at the West Gate. I thank you for your hard work. Unfortunately, City Lord Baron, his hard work can only do so much. Pandora responded with a slight tinge of hostility, as if the City Lord was being proud of something he shouldn't be. She approached the table in front of them, Dirk just hanging behind her and gnawing on a strip of dried meat. This city is on its last legs, as I've noticed after observing for all of today. Your soldiers are fatigued despite the abundance of food giving them, at best, another week of constant fighting before giving in. You are the sole rank 7, and you have no tier SIXS. They died protecting the city in the initial attacks, princess. The city lord suddenly snapped, as if to ensure Pandora wouldn't degrade their sacrifice. She just nodded. I figured as much. What I'm concerned about, city lord, is your lack of longevity. This city is crumbling, and soon enough you're going to be overrun. That's why we're targeting the Monster General. Actually, believe it or not, the presence of the three Monster Generals on the outskirts of the Hordes is the only thing keeping you alive right now. The City Lord was silent as Pandora smiled. There are three Monster Generals that are fighting amongst themselves. One will come out victorious, becoming the true General. Until then the majority of the monster's high-end strength is occupied with this civil war. Now, if we kill these generals while they're still weak, all the hordes will disperse. They'll be uncoordinated, but that will only end with all of them attacking the city instead of small armies. Those generals are holding them back, for now. But if we level the generals alive, they'll grow stronger until the last of them stands, then launching strategic offensives on the city. You pick up fast so you know how abysmal your ending is unless you enact another plan. The city lord went silent under Pandora's sharp gaze. Seeing as how the city lord was being pressured, though, a captain beside them stepped forward in anger. Hey! Do not disrespect the city lord. We have only survived this long through his leadership. I'm sure that's true. Unfortunately, no amount of reverence you have for your crippled city lord will save your future selves. Hold your tongue, lady. Shing! Suddenly, a dozen soldiers unsheathed their weapons. The air of rage and hostility poured out, making it seem like they would all impale the princess regardless of her background or seductive beauty. The nearby captain even pressed his spear against her throat. For a moment, everything was still, the slightest movement threatening to send the room into a frenzy. It was clear that everyone was on edge, exhausted and limited in patience. Pandora merely stood there, staring at the city lord with a wide smile. Her ruby eyes bored into the man, and for a moment, everyone saw past the graceful and royal princess. She almost looked, a bit thrilled by the turn of events, her smile sending chills down everyone's spines. Then, the city lord tore his gaze away from her, glancing at where Dirk was supposed to be. The only thing he saw was a black cat, its golden eyes peering into him. Stand down. 
the city lord commanded, and most of the soldiers sheathed their weapons. Except the captain, who still had an enraged face. City lord, this impudent wench should be tossed to the monsters outside the gates. The captain snarled as he pressed further. Pandora's pointed teeth were further exposed as he drew blood. For a moment, he glanced to her side, seeing spite. When he looked into that cat's eyes, he was enraptured. The next moment though, he felt a sharp prick on the back of his neck. Chills shot through his body, suddenly feeling like his life was going to slip away. Who? He spun around, pulling back his spear and slashing behind him. The spear was stopped by an armored hand though, a knee shooting to its shaft and snapping it in half. Dirk grabbed the captain's arm after breaking the spear, spinning him back around and slamming his head into the table in front of him. The captain struggled but couldn't budge Dirk's hold, forced down by the lock in his own joints. Dirk's head turned up, staring at the city lord. Dirk's eyes were covered by that cloth, but the city lord could still feel a piercing gaze, one that went further than vision. The city lord gulped. Even at his peak, he had never felt anything like Dirk's current aura. It wasn't amazingly threatening, not filled with bursting bloodlust or guttural rage. It was quiet, almost invisible. There wasn't any kind of killing intent or pressure. The city lord didn't even feel like his life was in danger. Despite the knife Dirk now had at the captain's throat, it didn't seem like he had any intention of killing the man, either. But that's exactly what alarmed the city lord. That utter disregard for life. The ability to kill without any form of emotion or motivation. The disconnect between an obvious threat and the non-existent sense of danger made him shiver inwardly, like knowing a ghost was drifting around you but being unable to see it. And that wasn't even considering his uncanny ability to disappear from under their noses. You surprise me, Dirk Strider. I had thought you would be more like your elder brother, more like your father. But, it seems you inherited your mother's side. A compliment, of course, considering her abilities that were greater than mine, even at my prime. Hmm. Dirk just hummed at the city lord's appeasing words. Then, everyone heard a clap, turning their heads to Pandora. I'm sorry, but if we could get back down to business. City lord, I suggest you remove any emotional soldiers from the room before you tell me exactly how you've planned on pulling the city out of its hellish pit. Very well. He nodded after a moment of silence, dismissing everyone but his highest advisors and officers. Dirk let his hostage go as well, the captain leaving without being able to look back at Dirk. After Pandora's small wound healed after a mere several seconds, they all gathered around the table. While Dirk remaining behind everyone was unsettling, nobody minded as Pandora bored into the city lord, prompting him to spill his secrets.